So throughout this section, and in all the videos that I've done on the simplex algorithm, all of them have been maximizing. So how can we adapt the simplex algorithm to deal with a minimizing problem? So let's say we wanted to minimize p equals x plus y, subject to 2x plus y is greater than or equal to 2, and x plus 2y is greater than or equal to 3, uh, where x and y are non-negative. Now, the first thing to point out is that if the origin was within your feasible region, then the minimizing of this would just be x is 0, y is 0. Okay? So it would be a trivial solution. So these types of problems, uh, to not be trivial, require us really to not have the origin as part of the feasible region. Okay? And this is a fairly basic one. Um, I would suggest, you know, um, uh, drawing it on Desmos or on your graphing calculator, just so you can see where these lines are, where these regions are, and um, also to kind of see where each stage of the simplex algorithm gets you. Okay. So, how do we deal with this? Well, the idea here is that we want to make p as small as possible. So, that would be the same as making minus p as large as possible. So essentially what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn this into a maximizing problem by multiplying the objective function through by minus 1. So essentially I'm going to work with maximizing. Let's call it now q, which is this multiply through by minus 1, where q is equal to minus p. Okay. Now, you could theoretically have minus p equals minus x minus y, um, and then you've got a minus 1 in place in your uh, tableau, which is okay. Uh, you know, you, it will still get you the same answer. Um, but I think it's kind of preferable to have uh, the coefficient of your objective value uh, to be 1. Okay? So that's, that's why I've done that. Okay? So we're going to maximize that. Okay, so if we're maximizing q here, then we're going to add everything onto one side. So we've got q plus x plus y is equal to 0. Okay, so we've got that. Right, well, um, these two inequalities here are greater than or equal to, so I'm going to have to have 2x plus y, uh, take away s1 plus a1, so we're going to have to bring in surplus and artificial variables here, uh, equal to 2. And then we're going to have x plus 2y, uh, take away s2 plus a2 is equal to 3. Now, because we brought in artificial variables, okay, we're going to have to add those two together, and we're going to introduce capital A to represent a, uh, A1 plus A2, the sum of the artificial variables. So A1 plus A2 is now equal to capital A. So I'm going to bring capital A to the front. 2x plus x is 3x. y plus 2y is 3y. We've got the takeaway S1. We've got the takeaway S2. Remember, those two have become that. And that's equal to 5. Okay? So essentially, we're going to minimize A and we're maximizing Q. Okay? So this is a two stage simplex problem. So let's set up the initial tableau. So A, uh, then I'm going to have Q, X, Y, S1, S2, A1, A2, and my right hand side. Okay, so we've got 1, 0, 3, 3, uh, minus 1, minus 1, 0, 0, 5. Then we're going to have this one. So 0, 1, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0. Then this one. 0, 0, 2, 1, minus 1. 0, 1, 0, 2. Then this one. 0, 0, 1, 2. Uh, 0, minus 1, 0, 1, 3. So this is row 1, 2, 
3 and 4. Okay? Right. So I'm going to need 5, 6, 7 and 8. Now, uh, because we are minimising A, we are looking for the largest positive in the top row, okay, rather than the largest negative. Now, we've got two threes here, so really it's a free choice as to which one I use as my pivot column. So I'm going to use uh, the X column. Okay. Now, remember, when you're doing the ratio test, uh, ignore this one. Okay. So ignore those top two rows. We're just going to be working with those two here. So we're going to have 2 divided by 2, which is 1, and 3 divided by 1 is 3. So the smaller of the two is this one. So that's going to be my pivot. So row 7 is going to be row 3 divided by 2. Okay. So we're going to have 0 divided by 2, 0 divided by 2, 2 divided by 2, 1 divided by 2, minus 1 divided by 2, 0, 1 divided by 2, 0, and 2 divided by 2. Okay, so then I'm going to use that to eliminate the x's in that column. So row 5 is going to be row 1, take away 3 lots of row 7. So 1 take away 3 lots of 0, 0 take away 3 lots of 0, 3 take away 3 lots of 1, 3 take away 3 lots of a half, so that's 3 take away 3 halves, which will be 3 halves, minus 1 take away 3 lots of minus a half is minus 1 plus 3 halves, which will be 1 half, minus 1 take away 3 lots of 0, 0 take away 3 lots of a half, so minus 3 halves. 0 take away 3 lots of 0. 5 take away 3 lots of 1, so 2. OK, so row 6 is going to be row 2, take away row 7. So 0 take away 0. 1 take away 0. 1 take away 1. 1 take away a half, 0 take away minus a half, 0 take away 0, 0 take away a half, 0 take away 0, 0 take away 1. OK, then row 4, sorry, row 8 is going to be row 4, take away row 7. So 0 take away 0, 0 take away 0, 1 take away 1. 2 take away a half will leave me with 3 halves. 0 take away minus a half is positive a half. Minus 1 take away 0 is minus 1. 0 take away a half is minus a half. 1 take away 0 is 1. 3 take away 1 is 2. Draw a line. 9, 10, 11 and 12. OK, so I've still got positives in the top row. So uh, the largest positive is the 3 halves, so I'm going to be using that one. Then uh, ignore those top two rows for the ratio test. We're going to have 1 divided by half, which is 2. And then 2 divided by 2 thirds, which is 2 times, sorry, 2 divided by 3 halves. So 2 divided by 3 halves is the same as 2 times 2 thirds, which is 4 thirds. So that's the one I want. So 4 thirds is less than 2. So I use that as the pivot. So row 12 is going to be row 8 divided by 3 halves, or times 2 thirds. OK. So, 0 divided by 3 halves, 0 divided by 3 halves, 0 divided by 3 halves, 3 halves divided by 3 halves, 1 divided by 3 halves. So, let's just say multiply by 2 thirds, it be easier for me. So, 1 half times by 2 thirds would be 1 third. Minus 1 times 2 thirds is minus 2 thirds. Minus a half times 2 thirds is minus a third. 1 times 2 thirds is 2 thirds. 2 times 2 thirds is 4 thirds. 
Okay, right. So row nine is going to be row five. Take away three halves of row 12. So one take away three halves of zero. Zero take away three halves of zero. Zero take away three halves of zero. Three halves take away three halves of one. So zero. One half times, sorry, one half take away three halves of a third. So three halves times a third is a half. So a half take away a half will be zero. Okay, I'm gonna start mistrusting my mental arithmetic at this stage. I think that's right. Um, you know, you might be going, why isn't Jack just using a calculator anyway? Yeah, okay, uh, so that's fine. Um, it's almost like a test just to see how far I can get without having to uh, pick up the calculator. So we've got minus one, take away three halves of minus two thirds is zero, so that's gone as well. Okay, that's nice. And then we've got minus three halves, uh, take away three halves times minus a third, and that's minus one. And then we've got zero, take away three halves of two thirds, so two thirds times three halves is just one. So that's just going to be take away one. And then we've got two, take away three halves times four thirds, which hopefully is zero. Yes, it is. Okay, so that's zero. It's good. So I know that this is the final iteration I need for this uh, stage. Okay, so row 10 is going to be row six, uh, take away a half of row 12. So zero take away half of zero, one take away half of zero, zero take away half of zero, one half take away a half of one, one half take away a half of a sixth, so uh, one half take away one half uh, times a third is one third. Uh, then we've got zero take away a half of minus two thirds, so that's zero plus a third, so one third. Then we've got minus a half, take away a half, times minus a third, which is minus a third. Then zero, take away a half of two thirds, so that's minus a third. Then minus one, take away a half, of four thirds, so minus five thirds. Okay. Right. Okay. So then, um, the net last row that we need is going to be row seven. Take away a half of row twelve. So zero take away a half of zero. Zero take away a half of zero. One take away a half of zero. A half take away a half of one. Then we've got minus a half. So minus a half take away one half times a third is minus two thirds. Uh, then we've got um, zero take away a half of two thirds. So that's going to be plus a third. Then we're going to have a half take away a half of minus a third. I've probably done that calculation several times, but I can't remember the result. Uh, two thirds. Then we've got zero, take away a half of two thirds, which is minus a third. And then one, take away a half of four thirds, which is just a third. Okie dokie, right. So, I know I'm done because there's no more positives in the top row, apart from that one, of course, but we ignore that. So I have minimized A down to zero. So at this point, I would then uh, delete uh, column A and row A and the columns for A1 and A2. OK, so what am I left with? So I'm going to have Q, X, Y. 
S1, S2, A1, A2 are gone, but I've got my right-hand side. Okay? So I've got uh, 1, 0, 0, 1 third, 1 third, minus 5 thirds. Okay? Uh, then um, I've got 0, 1, 0, minus 2 thirds, 1 third, and that's 1 third. And then I've got 0, 0, 1, 1 third, minus 2 thirds, and that's 4 thirds. Okay, so what am I left with? Well, I've got, um, now that I am maximizing Q, okay, I can't maximize it any further, I'm done, because there are no negatives in the top row. Um, so what I've got is that Q is equal to minus 5 thirds. And of course, if Q is equal to minus 5 thirds, then P has got to be 5 thirds. So P is 5 thirds, uh, where X is 1 third, Y is 4 thirds, and just check 1 third plus 4 thirds is 5 thirds, that's worked out. S1 and S2 are both 0. Okay, and so that is how we've worked through this minimizing problem by multiplying this through by minus 1 and maximizing Q instead, where Q is equal to minus P. But that, as you can see, that, that was actually quite a straightforward problem, okay? So it's, um, but it required um, two iterations of the simplex method for uh, stage 1. So, you know, I'm not expecting that you would have to do uh, more than one stage of something like this in an exam uh, because it's just too laborious. It just takes too much time. But really, it's knowing how you can adapt the problem to deal with minimizing and how you can set it up. Okay, um, That's really the key here for this type of problem.